This is huge. Okay, we have been talking about connectivity. So still, I'll be the last speaker talking about the connectivity here. So everything is connected, but yet we are disconnected with ourselves in a connected world. So let's take a few moments to go back in connection with ourselves into our mind and body. A simple question I ask myself, what changed in the past 30, 40 years? There are many things that have changed. The way we eat, the way we sleep, the way we communicate. But what is the utmost single thing that has changed? It's the world's population, as well as our lifespan. Our lifespan has increased by 20 years globally, and our world population has tremendously improved. When such beautiful things are happening in the world, then why are we getting sicker is a simple question I ask. World population living longer, but getting sicker. We are living longer than ever before in time, but are we healthier is a simple question I ask myself as a clinician, as a general practitioner. I see in and out every day so many patients with giving long diagnosis, ordering a lot of lab tests, imaging, to come to a conclusion of their signs and symptoms and end up with writing a long prescription medications. But at the end, are, am I making them healthier? Are they getting better? It's a simple question I ask myself. In this technological era today, we have more day-to-day -day symptoms, like we have more sleeping problems, we have more heart problems, we have more learning disabilities in the children, and we have more fatigue every day in and out. So, are we getting more ill or are we getting more well? So my day-to-day -day practice, when I take my patients for illness, I try to educate them and transform them into wellness. And that's what this preventive and regenerative medicine is all about. We were so excited, and the journey for the past 30 to 50 years in medical field is very tremendous when we discovered that the molecule of life, which is the DNA, we had answers in decoding the genetic code. We were so excited when we achieved that and we had more statistic, statistics in front of our, you know, proven that we have 3 billion DNA subunits and we had approximately 30,000 genetic code for proteins that perform most life functions. But what happened in this journey? In this journey of decoding our DNA, we forgot there is a inner ecosystem inside our body. Now, what is our inner ecosystem is a simple question I asked myself 10 years ago. Well, we think we are the most intelligent and accomplished species, and we are in charge. Yes, we are most intelligent species. That will, that's why we are technological savvy as of today, much more than any time in centuries. But are we in charge? Is a simple question I ask. So when the, our genetic scientists and the microbiologists got together after the research of years of putting time and money behind the research, the statistics spoke something different. The proportions of the cells in the human body were totally different. We have 30 trillion human cells in the body, and we have 100 trillion microbial cells in the same human body. So we are 10% human and 90% bacteria. Did we know this before? So our body has 10 times as many microbial cells as human cells. We have 23,000 genes, and we have 100 trillion genes in the human microbiome. 99% of our genes are in the microbial cells than in the human cells. 
So who's really in charge? When we were so behind the molecule of life, the DNA, the DNA reveals that we are someone else's property. Are we in charge? Or are we simply the host of the microbiome? Because the numbers speak so. We have 100 trillion viable microbes in the intestine. We have more than 30 trillion total number of cells in the body. We have 1,000 billion viable microbes on skin. And we are a population of 6.8 billion world population. Are we 100% human? Did you know that we have 100 trillion microorganisms inside our body? Just like the weed compete with the flowers for space and nutrients in the garden, bad bacteria compete with good bacteria in our gut. If the gut environment is healthy, bad bacteria cannot flourish. So the nature reveals that we have fellow travelers inside. We have 100 trillion friends that we did not know that we had. So why is the microbiome so vital to today's health? What is a microbiome, by the way? This is nothing but it's a collection of genetic material from the microorganisms of bacteria, virus, fungi, and their environment. Today, we have enough evidence to prove that unbalanced microbiome is the main culprit behind the cause and the signs and symptoms that we do day-to-day -day practice, like chronic fatigue, digestive discomfort, skin problems, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and mental issues. The mood that we go to, the stress we are talking about, the immunity in and out, and the weight, the fluctuations in our weight, does controlled by the microbiome. The bacteria in the gut are changing our genetic expression. Mistakes we did not know we were making with our microbiome. So what was the mistakes? We were so involved in the weed of our garden. We were so involved treating the germs around. We were so busy making the antibiotics, fungicides, pesticides to kill the bacteria, to kill the germs and we totally neglected the microbiome which is protecting and which can kill that same germ. As simple terms, according to the today's technological world, if I can say one sentence, pathogens have intricate communication system. They talk through basic cell phone technology with this, with, through their cell-to-cell -cell signaling. And we went there and took their cell phones away so that they, they no longer communicate and no longer share their genetic code and replicate to keep you away from the sickness. So why now? We thought we are much more advanced, advanced technologically and we have much more data on our molecule of life. But the impact is so big of the microbiome on human, animal and plants, agriculture and the environment. So microbes run the planet. It's a microbial world. There are 100 million times as many bacteria on the earth as stars in the universe. The story of the microbiome shows that everything is interconnected and it's time we pay attention. It should be an initiative from every point. We need environmentalists, human health, resources, and agriculturists come together to do some initiative programs. An unhealthy relationship that we had with a destructive imbalance with the climate change, food, air, quality, pollution, and contamination is what we had been doing the mistake of. But why now? Because we all share the same risk factors for the modern diseases. It is the inflammation and the immune dysregulation which is causing us sick today. And now we have the answer that unbalanced microbiome is making us sick and through stress, diet, infectious, bottle feeding, pollution, radiation, and toxic chemicals around us. If I can give you a simple example of why what changed in the past 30 to 40 years is as simple as maternal well-being to maternal stress today. 
vaginal deliveries to more C-sections today, to more like breastfeeding and no breastfeeding today, and less exposure to antibiotics as an emergency condition only, to more using antibiotics as simple as for a viral infection. So, food is the most abused anxiety drug and exercise is the most underutilized antidepressant today. So when I say food, everybody as my patients has come to me, oh, she's going to give me the best diet ever. Oh, tell me the best diet and I'm going to follow it to the T. There is no such thing as best diet. And it's time we took a, we look at the real food as food and increased as plant fibers, exposure to the microbes and decreased antibiotics and antibacterial soaps and artificial sweeteners. So it is more than the diet. It's time we look at the nutritional values in the diet. It's more than the content. It's time we look at the ingredients in the food that we eat in and out. So what we say? We say, think global, but please eat local. Eat local foods, local produce, and pick colorful foods than the processed foods and the artificial fruits that's made by the man. We have enough evidence today that we have benefits for pickles, vegetables, which we, India, we always had pickles. But today, we hardly have any because we thought it's going to cause the gastritis and everything. We have enough evidence to prove that the probiotics, which has always been in our culture foods, and the prebiotics, which are ancestral foods, which was always on the table. And please, let us concentrate on the seasonal foods that can make us healthy. Let's not get strawberries from New Zealand and apricots from Australia and everything. We have our own fruits and we have our own vegetables to keep and make us healthy. We have even enough evidence and to say and to promote the benefits of fermented foods. India had the most fermented foods ever. Our idlis, dosa, uttapam are the, have the highest amount of fermented foods which culturally proven, ancestrally proven, and today the science is accepting it. It improves digestion, increases the immunity, restores good bacteria to gut, and improves the vitamin content. Last but not the least, mindfulness. Mindfulness is a new science of health and happiness. Out of all the mindful practices, I just want to pay a small attention to mindful eating. It's time we pay attention why we are eating, when we are eating, what we are eating, and how much and where, with family, with outside, with friends, and listening to the food, smelling the food, and feeling the food with body awareness. Yes, the old saying, you are what you eat, it's not only you are what you eat, it's how you eat and the relationship with the food does matter. Next time will you pick up your plate, please ask what's on your plate and how many colors are rainbow colors you have on your plate. Last but not the least, please pay attention to the mindful eating which is changing us for the better, equation of well-being. Thank you so much for your kind attention and yes, next time, you ask, who am I? Don't feel lonely because we have our own friends inside us. If we keep the microbiome happy, we keep our cells happy. And if we keep our cells happy, we are happy about it. Thank you so much. <laughs>